Never a dull day supporting Oxford United is there. Crikey, can't we ever just make it easy. Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View for another review of another Oxford United game. Today, Oxford were at home to Wigan Athletic. Decent performance and a decent result last time out against Blackpool. You can see my review of that in the top corner. Please, somebody watch it. I know a lot of people didn't bother with that one. It's really good. It's really good. I promise I put about five minutes effort into it, but... Oxford had made that three draws in a row and five without a win as this promotion push was stalling but there was hope hope that we could get with players coming back more offensive players coming back that we could start to mount a bit more of a promotion push it needed to start with a win today which was not going to be an easy test against a difficult Wigan athletic side but thankfully Oh, Oxford just about got the job done. The scoreline, prob definitely, probably, definitely, I think so, flattered United. But they came through with an important victory. It finished Oxford United 4, Wigan Athletic 2. So I'll go over the team news like I normally do. I'll do my review of the game and I'll give my final thoughts for both sides. Please feel free to jump to any point of the video if you like. But if you do that, please hit that like button because that does help me out so much. And if you do like the content consider subscribing. So let's start with this Oxford United team news then. It was a bold selection from Des Buckingham and it was nice to see Oxford going with a pretty attacking lineup. Owen Dale making his first start. Jay Matete making his first start as well. And Josh Murphy also back in the starting lineup too. The players to drop out of the side from that draw against Blackpool, Tyler Bure, Tyler Goodrum and Ruben Rodriguez. Joe Bennett returned to the bench as well against his former club. But there was no Will Goodwin win as they're still nursing him back to full fitness it's a case of play a bit rest a bit play a bit rest a bit which is frustrating Whew, but it's not as frustrating when you do win a game like Oxford did today that can sort of go to the back burner but I, I thought this was a good lineup by Des Buckingham a good attacking lineup I, I thought the likes of Rodriguez needed a bit of a rest in there and it was good to see Matete getting a start, Murphy getting a start. And let's see what Owen Dale can do. Moving on to Wigan Athletic and Sean Maloney's Latics. Um, have had an up and down season, but considering they started the season on minus eight, I think Sean Maloney's doing a bloody good job. They started the day in 14th place, but have won three of the last five games. But last time out, a very disappointing home defeat to Exeter City. The Pies make two changes from that game. Matt Smith and Charlie Kelman starting over Scott Smith and Josh McGuinness. ex Oxford United defender Sean Clare starts at right wing back. So uh, not a lot of... Not a lot of love for Sean Clare coming back against his old club. But Stephen Humphreys, who was excellent in Wigan's 2-0 win over Oxford earlier on in the season, he is out injured and that is going to be a miss for the Pies. A lot of rain around in Oxfordshire and it made it a very greasy, slippery pitch and it made it a very error-stricken game. And you certainly saw that right from the start of the game, really. Um, only In the first 10 minutes, not really much happening. Just a couple of crosses from either side causing a little bit of problems. Um, one th the one for Oxford was from a Brannigan free kick which uh, Wigan skipper Hughes did really well to deflect behind for a corner but Wigan got to grips with the game better than Oxford United did and they started to pass the ball around with more authority Oxford really struggled with their passing in the first half very poor display from Oxford in the first half a couple of times Godo and Asgard nearly got in behind uh, for Wigan and then there was a, a counter attack a nice little break and it led to Chambers coming all the way up from defence with a very stinging effort from about 25 yards which Cumming did well to parry away Oxford did start to get a little bit better as the, get, as the first half went on, but it was Wigan who were constantly causing Oxford problems when they were able to break the press or get a counter-attack going. It was Goddo who nearly got in behind, actually, when Kieran Brown gave the ball away. Um, very poor bit of play by Brown, but Brown did well to get back to make the initial tackle, but Goddo got a second bite of the cherry and flicked it just wide, and then Oxford's closest they came in the first half is when, actually, McGuane and Brannigan sort of switched roles a little bit. It was a very nice move from Oxford, you know, up the field, McGuane linking up well with Murphy. Murphy got the ball back into McGuane in the penalty area. McGuane played it back to Brannigan, who hit an absolute rocket of a shot. 
But it bounced off the post and away to safety. So no surprise, really, when Oxford not playing well. It's Cameron Brannigan, desperately the only one seemingly trying to pull Oxford up. But it was nervy and it was frustrating. And those frustration levels rose on 40 minutes when Wigan took the lead. And you have to say, on the balance of play, they probably deserve it. And just overall, they just seemed a little bit more determined to win the balls in midfield. A little bit more determined to pass the ball with more purpose. And this is what really led to the goal. Sam Long slid in to win a ball in defence. But it went into midfield. And the Deco was just ahead of Matete, ahead of Brannigan McGuane. He got to the ball first, played it through to the left-hand side side the Oxford right long was a little bit out of position and it meant Jones could just skip around him into the penalty area it was a tight angle but Jones drives it into the bottom corner via a little deflection off Elliot Moore and a just absolute nightmare for United 1-0 down we've seen this script before we saw it away at Wigan it felt like a long way back. But sometimes if you can't be good, then you need to be lucky. And Oxford got that little bit of luck that they needed. Maybe they'd been missing in recent weeks and they got back level with virtually the last kick of the half. Relief all around the ground. But big credit to Mark Harris for this goal. We held up just a long speculative ball forward and Mark Harris did a really good job of holding the ball up. He got Bob Josh Murphy involved in the play. Josh Murphy had a bit of space on the edge of the box but Greg Lee's dummy run meant that he took away a couple of defenders which meant Josh Murphy had even more space. And Murph delivered. Placed it beautifully into the bottom corner. Tickle well beaten on this shot. Oxford back level. Did we deserve it? Probably not. Who cares? So yeah, level at the break at 1-1 and uh, certainly felt lucky to be so. Uh, barring a couple of shots from Brannigan and barring a couple of runs from Murphy, Oxford have been very poor in this game. Wigan haven't been great either. It's not as if they were completely like battering down the door. Uh, but they just seem to play with a little bit more energy and they just seem to play with a little bit more purpose but both sides did struggle and did make mistakes in the conditions um, and it made it a very very scrappy game and not a great game to watch really in the first half Owen Dale not very good on his debut expect better from him in recent weeks let's not give up on him so far but whew, when you're staring at one nil down you're just grateful to be level at the break But Des Buckingham loves a half-time substitution and his substitutions did change this game. And uh, not surprisingly, after that first half, Oxford made the change. Tyler Goodrum came on for Owen Dale. And not long after 10 minutes into this second half, Oxford take the lead in the game. Um, Oxford did start the second half the better side. They started to just pass the ball around with more confidence. They just had a bit more spell of possession in the Wigan area and just, you know, players looked a little bit more comfortable on the ball. And it was a nice spell of possession that led to the goal and it led to Cam Brannigan getting a shot on the edge of the box. It was kind of, looked like the chance had gone, but Cameron Brannigan got, got the shot away. It wasn't a great shot. But it took a massive deflection and it's just one of those ones that just rolled into the middle of the goal. Tickle was already committed to the dive. He was on the floor. Oxford away celebrating. As I say, if you can't be good, be lucky. But Wigan was certainly not out of this game by any stretch. And they continued to come forward. They continued to push and push and push all night. And it was not a comfortable evening for Oxford United probably until the very end of the game um Elliot Moore I, I thought at times had a very poor game today a very rare off the boil performance from the skipper some silly mistakes and some free kicks but the luck did remain with United and um the little moments just went our way there was a good cross into the box and on as a sub McGuinness got a good header on it it just flicked well up into the air and coming didn't seem to know whether it was going over the bar or what was happening with it and it just kind of sort of bounced down onto either the post or onto the bar and it was a very very confusing moment it was lucky it didn't just drop to a Wigan player who could have just tapped it in and luckily coming was just able to smuggle it behind for a corner and as I say you felt Oxford were just getting that rub of the green in this game because three minutes later 3-1 to Oxford United a massive massive goal in this game Tyler Goodrum with one of his trademark runs, he just glide, glided past people on the left-hand side, cut in, another good run by Greg Lee, took some players 
years away. He's about 25 yards out. We've seen this script before. He places it, he hits it with quite a lot of power into the sort of the left hand side of the goal. A tickle was well beaten, but it cannoned into the post. And unlike Brannigan's effort in the first half, which fell to a Wigan player, this time it fell to Ruben Rodriguez, who converted the chance on the rebound, tapped it, well, just placed it nicely into the empty net. The two subs combining, which I'm sure was very satisfying for Buckingham. But as I said, Wigan were just never done in this game, and credit to them because they kept pushing and they kept they kept asking Oxford United questions in this game, and they kept the ball alive from a corner. They worked it back out to the left hand side. Oxford's right. They whipped an excellent cross was whipped in, and Asgard thumped in the header from about six yards. So just about you, you think in Oxford United, we're okay. We're up three one. We're going to be done in this game. Pegged back with ten minutes to go, and it's back to biting your fingernails time. It's very very nervy in that final 10 minutes as Wigan pushed and pushed and pushed but Oxford still tried to create chances on the break and they still tried to press Wigan into mistakes at the back it wasn't like what we've seen of Oxford in the past where they've just been completely defense orientated they did still try to get at Wigan and get that fourth goal and kill the game some excellent possession uh, from United a lovely move that took the sting out of Wigan a little bit it came to Harris on the edge of the box. He's been lethal of late, Mark Harris, but this one flashed just wide. Wigan went straight up the other end. Jamie coming just about dealing with a shot from Callum McManaman. Um, just about smuggled it behind. And then from that corner, McGovern cross into the box and McGuinness glances a header just wide. So we moved into six minutes of stoppage time and you just thought Oxford are just going to find their way over the line in this game. But Oxford did get that fourth goal in stoppage time you thought it was going to be the goal for Mark Harris it was a lovely good move again for Oxford United Harris found a bit of space in the box and you're just waiting for him to pull the trigger and smash it into the net but he delayed the shot Wigan got a tackle challenge in but it came out to Tyler Goodrum who smashed it in from inside the area to make it 4-2 very nice finish from Tyler Goodrum although I think it may have taken a deflection but like I say who cares Oxford back to winning ways five without a win well that is chalked off now and now we can look forward to that trip to Wickham. And that brings me on to my final thoughts. And uh, first, let's start with the visitors, Wigan Athletic. And I think you'd be a little bit disappointed to come away with nothing from that game. I thought you were probably... I think the luck really wasn't on your side in this one. You took the lead uh, in a... Not much going on in the first half, but you were the side probably pushing more for that first goal. You took the lead. You thought you were going to take that lead into half time, but Oxford just managed to peg you back right at the end of the first half. And then shot, things just seemed to go our way, and they didn't go Wigan's way. Oh, I wouldn't really say there's too much to worry about. I thought Wigan caused Oxford loads of problems today. I thought he had a lot of really good energy through the side. I thought he looked dangerous from the wide areas particularly Jones on the left hand side had the beating of Sam Long all day long but the likes of Goddo, Asgard, Kelman um, just willing runners and putting the defenders under pressure you've got the likes of McGuinness coming on making that physical presence as well I would say just a case of things just not going your way today I, I still thought you played well I mean I, I love the switch of play you had in the first half from Hughes just hitting raking balls out to Jones time and time again and uh, but I'd like to know what you think about this one uh, I I, I I don't really think there's too much Wigan did wrong in this game other than just, you know, Oxford, let's say, got a bit of the bounce of the ball and a rub of the green. Very fussy ref, very, very weird referee in performance, very fussy, and, and you never knew what he was going to give, but that's kind of par for the course for League One. But let me know what your thoughts are, Wigan fans. Let me know what your thoughts are on the game. Let me know what your thoughts were for your hopes for the rest of the season and the job that you think that um, Sean Maloney is doing in charge. And good luck for the rest of the season. If you could beat some of those playoff rivals, that would be fantastic. And um, we will move on to Oxford United and my... Goodness, we needed that. We really needed that today. The first half was really poor. It's so weird, isn't it, in football? You think that you've got those attacking players back. You put in a good performance against Blackpool. You think, well, let's if we take that performance into this game with those attacking players, we should be fine. But it doesn't work out that way. The first half looked very disjointed. That midfield trio of Matete, Brannigan and McGuay never really clicked. Dale 
didn't have a good game. Sang Long was poor in the first half of this game as well. And um, and Oxford were lucky to be in the game at 1-1 at half time. But saying that, the second half was better from Oxford United. We did ask more questions. Goodrum made a difference when he came on. I still think Josh Murphy had a really good game. Uh, Ruben Rodriguez looked a little bit refreshed. He looked like he had a bit of a point to prove when he came on as well. And I thought overall, although there was some scrappiness and some some edginess in the game and certainly was not plain sailing for Oxford United at all um I think that all in all we we just had to win <laughs> we just had to win and we've done it we've scored some goals an entertaining game and the crowd go home happy so everyone will be happy from Oxford United point of view it's still worrying that we just look a bit leaky at the back we don't seem to be able to just sh- sh- uh, close out a game we always make it difficult for ourselves but Buckingham will, will be pleased with the substitutions that he's made there, hasn't he, won't he? Look, he's brought Goodrum on, he's got a goal, and he's made the set goal for Rodriguez. And so, you know, I would say he's done a he's done a good job tonight with his substitutions. And I think the team he named as well was a good side that most people were happy with, and um, they just didn't click. Uh, and sometimes that happens. It's not really, you know, Buckingham's not going to know what they're going to do once they step over the white line. But... All in all, very encouraging, very encouraging. If we can back that up against Wickham, if we can beat Wickham on Saturday, what a huge shot in the arm that will do to everyone's confidence. That will bring everyone's belief back, won't it? But let's not say after that Wickham game, that is still two tough home games against Leighton Orient and against Northampton. Those two sides are flying in League One as well. And they're going to come to the Kassam and pose probably just as many questions as Wigan did tonight. But... All in all, encouraging signs for Oxford. We've got four goals. We've got the win. And um, we look, and again, just nice that we've got the ability to change the game from the bench, which is probably the most overall encouraging thing. A uh, quick shout out. I thought Greg Lee looked really good tonight again. Uh, I thought he's been very disciplined in his role at left back, but he seems to be able to pick his moments of know when to go up and make a difference in attack. And he just makes a nice difference having him in at the back post and very athletic player that can win plenty of balls in the air. So all in all, happy days. Let's uh, nice to have a smile at the end of one of these videos. And um, thanks for thanks very much for watching. Leave your comments down below. We'll be back to do another video for that big game we have against those noisy neighbours down the road in Buckinghamshire. Hopefully we can beat them for once. <laughs>